Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has agreed to release over 100 Palestinian prisoners as a confidence-building gesture in the renewal of peace talks with the Palestinian Authority. In a controversial move, Netanyahu managed to receive support for the decision and has convened a special committee in order to assess the identity of the prisoners, some of which have blood on their hands. Many Israeli negotiators opposed the release of any prisoners prior to negotiating the peace agreement. It's not that we're against the release of prisoners, it is the context. If there will be, you know, see the Shalit deal, Israel released 1,027's uh, uh, most dangerous prisoners uh, and still the public accepted it. Why? Because it was for a real deal. Here, the public feels that we paid something or we indicated our willingness to pay something without really getting something in return. The basic rules in these type of negotiations argues that you don't pay anything in order to enter to the negotiations. Why? Because negotiation itself and uh, uh, starting, engaging a negotiation should be, and I think it is, mutual interest of Netanyahu and Abbas. However, other experts explain why such a gesture is necessary for peace talks to begin. I think this has to be seen, first of all, as a confidence-building measure. Uh, it was particularly important to the Palestinians because Abu Mazen is weak. He has to show something to his public. And particularly after the uh, release of the Hamas prisoners in exchange for Gilad Shalit. Because that, present, that presented a situation in which Abu Mazen looked as if his policy of negotiation had totally failed and Hamas's policy of violence was successful. So I think that's the reason that they, the major reason that Abu Mazen was asking for the release of prisoners. If there is so much Israeli contempt in regards to this release, why is the Israeli government still going ahead with it? Because probably Netanyahu had to face a very hard choice, whether to release prisoners or to freeze settlements. Released prisoners will not bring him into you know, a lot of uh, tension with his current uh, uh, government partners, mainly Naftali Bennett and, and uh, his uh, Knesset members. But freeze of settlements will put a real risk on Netanyahu's capability to really ignite the negotiation and continue to govern. So between these two evils, when forced by the Americans to pay a price, Netanyahu chose the, uh, the only option that could really, uh, uh, um, that, that was the less risky for him. The first round of preliminary meetings between both the Israeli and the Palestinian parties took place in Washington, D.C. this past week, angering many Israelis who feel they have not yet heard of gestures or concessions on the Palestinian side. I don't know what on the public sphere the Palestinians did in order to enter into negotiations. Probably they agreed to uh, maintain or reduce pressure regarding the September UN, uh, their efforts to upgrade their status in the UN. But if this is what the Palestinians paid in order to enter the negotiation, let the public know about it. Because at the moment it seems that only Israel's paid something in order to enter into the negotiation. This really puts Israel in a dramatic disadvantage and this is not the way it should be. And yet some wish to stress that all of the Palestinian prisoners who will be released are from a list which was agreed upon some 20 years ago. This is a commitment that was made when there were a number of mutual commitments made in when the Oslo Accords were signed uh, to draw a line on the past. That's why it's pre-Oslo prisoners. It's not terrorists who were arrested uh, in the Intifada, the second Intifada, or in the Oslo period. It's not a numbers game. It's always difficult. Unfortunately, there are many precedents going all the way back, certainly to, to the 1980s. With the newest additions to the American mediation team, some hope is demonstrated among Israeli experts on negotiation. With Martin Indyk professionalism and John Kerry's enthusiasm and the support of Barack Obama, we might see, I'm thinking very carefully, I hope that we will see a different pattern of American uh, uh, mediation. Whether it will uh, yield results, we still don't know. The real question is, of course, is will these talks actually lead to an agreement? We've tried in the past. It's been extraordinarily difficult, indeed impossible. But um, we can always be hopeful.
With optimism somewhat expressed in regards to reigniting the peace process, Israelis await following the events to come. For JN1, I'm Sivan Raviv, Israel.